You may be one of the people who has seen one of my most intense moments in hunting when I shot a mule deer at over 12,000 feet. In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I needed in my pack to get the job done. What's happening today, I have right here, this is my pack that I took into the mountains on a recent trip to hunt mule deer in high country, pretty much always stalking above 12,000 feet. So I'm gonna show you what's in this pack what I carried on a day-to-day -day basis, and then talk a little bit maybe about what I had if I was trying to spike out and do a more backcountry type of thing. So, we'll just start undoing zippers here and pulling stuff out of the pack. Uh, this is a 4800. Um, it's about the smallest that I would do if I was gonna spike out, but for a day pack, it's actually pretty nice. You can carry a lot of stuff in it. So this is the stuff that I've got in this uh, kind of accessory big pouch on the back. Um, I have two releases, um, so a backup release. KC let me borrow his. This is goes with me daily. It's a little chewing gum, which I like. Uh, gives you a little sugar and just something tasty in the backcountry. I got Benadryl. I think those are highly important to have daily with you, uh, just in case uh, you have a weird reaction to something. Um, and then ibuprofen, and these are like Claritin 24 hour allergy things. So if you have allergies, I suggest getting on that ahead of time. Uh, and like I said, these are just ibuprofens uh, for random back aches and stuff that I have from football or whatever in the past. Steripen, that is <clears throat> essential, especially in the high country because you can't just come across water everywhere. And if you do, uh, to be able to <clears throat> fill up and even take water back to your camp or whatever um, is is a good thing. But the SteriPen is, uh, in case you're out there and get caught in the elements or you're extra thirsty for some reason, you can put in a lot of work, you kill a deer, you need something to drink after you use water to wash your hands or whatever like that. <clears throat> These are extra batteries for the SteriPen. As you can tell, I'm cheap. And I've got uh, different brands here that mix and match. It may not be the smartest thing in the world. Uh, this is a phone scope type of deal. Um, so you can, you know, without having to close your eye the whole time, you can put your phone in here and kind of see things <clears throat> with two eyes. It's, it makes things uh, nice as far as spotting goes. I always have two headlamps. So I think the other one's in here somewhere, but this is one of my headlamps. Um, and you wanna, this one, it's out of batteries apparently, so that's good. Um, but the other one, I have the ability to lock off so that it doesn't uh, burn batteries in my bag. Bunch of toilet paper for obvious reasons. Also, uh, we use the toilet paper to like wipe the deer's mouth and nose after you kill it so it looks presentable and you can put it on the internet without a bunch of people getting weird feeling and raging about it. World's tiniest toothpaste if you uh, like to brush your teeth. Um, moleskin padding. I've never actually used this, so I'm not sure how many more times this will make it into my pack. Uh, but this is in case you have something on your foot that needs a little extra padding. So uh, most of the time, like a tender area or a blister or something like that. Um, first aid kit. This goes uh, even into the whitetail woods with me most of the time in my whitetail bag. It's got not crazy things, but it's got some band-aids, some neosporin. Um, I don't know what else it's got. Maybe some gauze. Yeah, gauze. Some tape, athletic tape. I've cut myself on some broadheads before. It's pretty handy to have a little athletic tape in this board. I think that's a good thing. So basic first aid kit goes with me everywhere. And that's all in that pouch. Um, this, let's just go ahead and, well, talk about some of the side things here. These are our trekking poles. Uh, people, might call them sissy sticks or something like that. I have no pride issues with these at all. They uh, go with me on most mountain hunts and especially in super high country where I'm hunting above 12,000 feet like I did on this trip. These uh, went everywhere with me. Um, I throw a little duct tape on them and electrical tape in case I need to fix things that uh, have electronics or uh, do whatever I need to do with duct tape. So it's a way to carry duct tape with you into the back country. Uh, this is a carbon tripod it's really nice actually um the way that you can pull all this out like super quick and then lock it i like this tripod a lot it's by vortex i don't remember it's just their carbon one um anyway it's all controlled and locked and loosened by the handle which is pretty nice as well good good thing to have if you're going to be glassing a lot 
or you're in glass and country and you want to use a spot and scope which is something I carried everywhere I went as well um, if you're not worried about the class of the animal or if you're not hunting animals that are bedded stationary from a mile plus away you may not want to carry a spotting scope or you may want to carry a spotting scope that's smaller uh, this one's pretty pretty big and heavy duty um, and we needed it on this trip we used it a lot um, always carry two Nalgene's um, because for me and I think a lot of guys you pretty much can drink two Nalgene's in a day pretty easy um, so I always carry two. Also, if a horse steps on your Nalgene or you drop it and it floats down a river in the water or whatever might happen, uh, it's good to have a backup thing to put water into because if you don't have a way to carry water around with you because you lost your one and only Nalgene, you can get into trouble really quickly in the back country. Go to the lid here. There's a lot of little knickknacks that I put in the lids. This is a water filter that filters out like sediment and stuff. It's pretty handy like if you're in small streams that have, uh, they can stir up algae really easy or even big streams that are like, you know, if you're hunting, if you're in a, more more for like trout fishing or something, if you're, you know, there during high water, there's a lot of sediment coming downstream, this just filters out that. The SteriPen is really the most effective part of the water filtration system for what I, I actually need it for. Super glue, always carry super glue everywhere. Uh, it's a good way to, um, if you get cut really bad by a broadhead or whatever on your finger, you can super glue it up and it will um, be just fine. You'll stop bleeding pretty immediately. Also fixes a lot of things. I had some sunglasses, which is another thing that I do bring that I don't have with me right now. Always bring sunglasses into the backcountry. Um, you gotta be kind of mindful if you're like stalking a deer and you've got this reflective thing on top of your head or on your face, right? But for just general sitting around in the middle of the day, sunglasses are key to keeping headaches away and uh, just kind of preserving your eyesight, I guess, for me. But uh, I broke my sunglasses on this trip and was able to super glue them a couple times. It didn't really work that great, but uh, super glue is a handy thing to have, fixes a lot of things. This is a Garmin InReach Mini. I take this on most backcountry hunts where I won't have service. Uh, mainly just uh, the main thing is this SOS button in case you get into big trouble also um, I do like to text my wife and just make sure things are going well at home because I want to be able to pull out of the mountains really quickly if something uh, bad arises you know last year I was within service but um, you know we had a death in the family and I had to leave a hunt like you know pretty much after hunting a morning on that hunt and so stuff like that happens it's not fun but uh, to be able to keep up with it is important for me. So I carry the inReach when I go places. This is a charging cord for the iPhone, um, which I will show you how I charge stuff in the backcountry. You can carry a power bank, but I do it a different way. Um, this is key for me because we use OnX a lot in most of these places that we're at. You can save maps offline with OnX and then um, use those in the backcountry even with no service, which is handy. So since I do that and use that phone a lot, it burns the battery and I need to be able to charge my phone to keep, it, uh, keep the battery good on it for a while. Also, I use my phone for the inReach, which uh, it'll use it without, or you can use it without the phone, but it's way easier on the phone, so I like to keep it uh, ready to go there. Uh, cleaning knives, the other one like you saw is in the Ziploc because it got nasty. I actually killed a deer and got to use it. Uh, this is a replaceable um, knife right here. It's got the little scalpel blades and they're replaceable and you can um, clean an entire deer with two blades usually. I, I can do it with one too if I'm cheap, which I am. So I got uh, two of those with me. It's always good to have a backup knife, I think. So a couple of things that I have backups are, like I said, again, the Nalgene's, always try to have two of those. Always try to have two headlamps and at least two knives on a trip. Those are things that you almost just cannot live without. So if you lose one, it could be bad. I carried this paracord around. I've got like a shorter strand here and a long strand. I carry the short strand so that I can keep this one long because in bear country, uh, in black bear country we're not as wor worried about it, but like in grizzly country especially you're gonna want to hang your food a lot of times and you need something that's like 30 plus foot and they sell these in like 50s I think. So uh, I carry the paracord with me everywhere I go in case I'm spiking out especially um, then I, I, will, I will have something to hang my food with or whatever and keep it out of my tent then smaller paracord shorter strands that i can cut up to use for like uh hanging meat um 
for a little while, let it you know cool off, or uh, it could I mean it could be anything. You could you know use it for anything to or patch a pack or be a some sort of sort of strap uh, to you know hang your rangefinder or whatever. This right here is called Luco Tape. L E U K O Luco Tape. This goes to the backcountry with me for sure. Saved me on this last trip and it saved me before. It is like an athletic tape, but it's different somehow. I don't know how it is. Super sticky. You take it off. Uh, my heels, as soon as you get a hot spot, as soon as you start feeling a spot that is warm on your foot from rubbing, whether you're going uphill, downhill, side hill, whatever, make sure to put this over that spot. And I had that happen like uh, day one, the full first full day we were in there. And I put this stuff on there and by the sixth day we were, seventh day we were in there, I still is still on there um, and sticking well and had no issues whatsoever with blisters in those spots. It's crazy what this stuff does. Definitely worth having. There's my backup light. Like I said, if you don't have one that locks, I highly suggest getting one that does lock. So it's locked. It lets you know the red light beeps and lets you know that it is locked so I can unlock it and use it. But it won't turn on my pack. The, the biggest nightmare is to try to uh, clean a deer, pack out a deer with no light in the night, right? So you've got to have something that will save your batteries. If you don't, which actually, that's what I, that's why this thing is not working. I think I turned the batteries around. Yep. So I forgot that I did that. Now it's on. So I always turn like the middle battery around in a, in a headlamp if it won't lock and that keeps it from turning on in your pack. So this is a charging cord for the Garmin uh, inReach. Um, so I make sure and have that because uh, last time I turned my inReach on I hadn't used it in a while and it was uh, completely out of battery. These are stuff that I had in the tent. It's the same basic stuff. Advil, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, uh, Benadryl, that kind of thing. Matches. So I have a lighter that I use for like my pocket rocket stove and stuff like that. It's um, always good though to have at least a backup lighter or if nothing else, a match. I carry these matches because they're waterproof um, and they're big, so they put off a lot of heat. They got like a big gunpowder thing on them or whatever that, that, that lights up. So I always carry the matches and I never use them. But it's one of those things that if you need it, you have to have it kind of thing. Uh, a little more toilet paper. I put that in a Ziploc, try to keep it from getting wet. So in the high country, early season, a lot of times you get pop-up storms. You don't want it to get wet. Um, like I said, it's good to have a couple of Ziplocs. They don't weigh anything and they can keep stuff clean or dry that you need to. That's uh, gonna be about it there. Now we go to the big pouch. Um, this is how I charge everything. It's a solar charger from Anchor. Um, we've had some Anchor products. I think I trust them pretty well, um, but there's other plenty of other brands out there. This thing opens up, has three panels, and a little pocket right here that plugs into USB. You plug two USB things in. So, pretty simple. It will, it will almost not work unless it's very pretty sunny. So if it's cloudy, overcast, you're gonna, you may not even be able to cha charge your phone. It will just go off and on charging. But if it's sunny, this thing works really well, actually. Rain gear. This is the Omen by First Light. I got the top and I got the bottom. Um, a lot of people use cheaper alternatives. I think it's good to have a poncho too because you can put, because you can put your uh, poncho over your backpack to keep things in that dry so it's good to have like a cheap 99 cent poncho as well but as far as like being active and hunting in the in the uh, rain a poncho is not very effective so something like a decent rain system is a good thing to have in the backcountry it keeps you from potentially getting hypothermic um, or just being miserable period right and not being able to dry out it's hard to dry out in the mountains sometimes even though it's arid um, a lot of times you may have a pop-up shower in the afternoon you don't dry out, it goes, you go through the night and nothing dries out in the night because it's dark and cold. And then by the morning you're having to put on cold clothes or whatever and you're miserable until late afternoon the next day a lot of times. So waterproof gear is very essential and I did take it on every single day trip that we had in the mountains. <clears throat> a couple of layers are always good to have. I have a jacket here, it's kind of my main jacket I used. And then a vest and I also carried another puffy a lot of times depending on how cold it was that morning and what I thought I might need throughout the day. 
Um, I run a little bit cold, so guys you may be able to get away with two layers instead of three. Um, I used three quite a bit and took three with me almost every day. So those go in the day pouch or day pack as well. Um, a hood, one of those has a hood on it. It's a good thing to have a hood probably in a lot of situations. You may want a lighter hood than what's on a jacket. Um, something that's like on a merino long sleeve or something that keeps the sun off your head because you may have to be sitting on a deer or an elk or something that's bedded for some time and the sun can just eat you alive man it can burn you up and make your whole trip uncomfortable the sun kind of to me at least it feels like when you just out in the sun all day that you are zapped your energy is kind of gone and stuff like that so to keep that off, off of you is a very important thing also um, you can use like the neck gaiters that they use for fishing, uh, actually First Light makes one, so they're just merino neck gaiters that are real thin. They're not fun to put over your mouth and when it's hot, but they do keep your ears and, and neck uh, from getting burnt. Um, here is my food. I put it on a dry sack. I think that is a good way to do it. Um, I actually, this is all the food I had left on the, the hunt, so we pretty much maxed out. Um, but typically on a day, uh, depends on what I want to do with it. I'll carry this and I'll mix uh, caffeine drinks in this to just make me feel good and keep me awake and alert. Um, sometimes on a day trip I will take uh, some butane and this pocket rocket which is really a pretty small tool that goes in the top there and you can put a metal deal on top, a metal dish on top of it like this. And this spreads out so you just put that on top you can warm up water boil it put it into some dry free uh, freeze dry food like this have a good lunch uh, if you spike out you definitely want to take something like this I think um, but if you're just day hunting you may not want to take all this depending on how far you're going and how warm or cold it is if it's if you want something to warm you up in the middle of the day because it's cold and you want a lunch like that then by all means a backcountry uh, some might call it a spork, some might call it a spoon, a fork, or a fapoon. So those are uh, highly something that you definitely want to have when you have uh, freeze dry. And then uh, a lot of people carry granola. It's not my favorite, but it is um, a little bit of sweetness with a lot of bit of protein and good uh, fatty omegas and whatever else. This is my energy stuff here that I drink. Uh, I carry meat for lunch usually. These meat sticks, Old Wisconsin, they're really good about three days in. Uh, and then after that, you get real tired of them because they're full of preservatives and salt. And you get tired of that in the back country. Uh, one thing about the spoon also I mentioned, this is a short one. I carry a lot of times a longer spoon just from the kitchen. But if you can, you can get like plastic one, it doesn't weigh so much. And that way you don't get your hands all nasty when you dip into these freeze dries. They're kind of deep. So um, I carry a couple of Walmart sacks as well with me. They work really well as trash bags most of the time. You can also throw a heart in there if you want when you clean your deer. But I use them as trash bags for this stuff uh, to kind of separate my trash from uh, what I've got going on in here. And then I do, I don't have any more of this, but I do some dehydrating. And when you dehydrate, uh, apples and bananas for 10 hours or so. They are really tasty in the back country. Um, as far as anything else I might put, my tag is in here as well. I carry gloves, uh, which I feel like they're in here somewhere. Uh, extra socks sometimes are a good thing to carry. Extra Walmart sack, like I said, my tag's in there. Some zip ties to put your tag on with. Those are all good things. And then on uh, an overnight or spike out, basically you take all this, whatever food for the days that you think that you're gonna spike out for, and then basically the things you're gonna add on top of that is just living. So extra food that you might need, which you know that you wouldn't need on a just one day basis. And then also uh, a tent and whatever that includes is whether it's steaks or rain fly or whatever. Um, and then I, I use a Lux tent, which basically uses either a trekking pole or about a four or five foot just stick from the woods and everything else is just little tiny tent stakes. So it's super light um, and it's got a rain fly, which is good. Um, and then also a sleeping pad is something I use a lot. I've got an insulated one right now that I really like uh, from Nemo. It's really cool, really good. Uh, doesn't like my, my shoulder and my hip don't touch the ground if I, if I fill it up 
uh, pretty pretty well. And then also a sleeping bag is a good thing to have because uh, obviously it can get really cold at night. You want to try to find the right weight to warmth ratio in those things. That can be tough, but if you have an idea what you're going to be dealing with in the night there, uh, carrying something that's not rated too much colder than that will keep your weight um, from from rising. It'll keep your weight down as well. So uh, you just got to kind of weigh all these things out. Uh, don't be intimidated. Uh, practice this stuff, you know, in the front country a little bit, for lack of a better word. Uh, where it's not so imperative that you do it right because you know you're not going to lose your life necessarily in the front country. Uh, practice this stuff, see what is uncomfortable for you, what you might need. That way, when you go into the back country, you're not really worried about your system. You kind of have it dialed, you nail it, and you you can focus more on hunting and killing that animal that you're after. So, anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, throw it in the comments below. And remember, this is your element. Live in it. Click on this video right here to watch how the whole thing went down.